Good afternoon, my name is Steve and I'll be the host of today's Hangout. Joining us today for our 13th Google Hangout is Charlie Seifer, an air filtration expert with Campbell USA, the global leader in clean air solutions. Today we're going to talk about the risks faced by visitors to hospitals and how they can be addressed. Hey Charlie, how are you today? Good, Steve, how are you? Excellent, excellent. Back from vacation and ready to go. So and I'm, going to, I'm going to take the next two days off, so. Excellent. You can take the next two off also. Sounds good. Uh, what are the risks when uh, I visit someone in the hospital or I'm treated as an outpatient? Let's start there. Well, you know, Steve, the risks are, are getting pretty consistent everywhere. Uh, the world is becoming smaller and smaller, and people just don't think of it because typically we live in our own world. The population is becoming more dense. Uh, and last year, over 200 million people traveled internationally through the United States. So, it's, uh, so the density of the population can affect the transfer of infectious diseases, and so can travel. I mean, somebody could have been in Korea yesterday, and all of a sudden, they're in the United States today. And of course, where do we put people that are ill? We put them in the hospital. Uh, the immediate uh, items of concern right now are, are what's hitting the news is tuberculosis for obvious reasons. It's making kind of a resurgent. Uh, resurgence, and they're having a little bit of a problem with uh, drug-resistant tuberculosis, which is another subject matter. And then, of course, we've got rhinovirus, which is basically the common cold, uh, debilitates us, uh, you know, doesn't incapacitate us, or maybe it does with some people, uh, but it can get annoying for at least a few days, maybe take uh, days off from work, etc. And then, of course, the flu. Uh, unfortunately, where do we put these people? Uh, we, When they've got other maladies that are happening, we end up putting them in the hospital and, uh, you know, as good people we are, we go visit our relatives, go visit our friends in the hospitals and unfortunately we're susceptible to picking up some of these problems that these people may be capable of transferring. Hmm. Have the hospitals taken any steps to protect visitors and outpatients? Actually the hospitals have done an excellent job. Uh, part of that dictated by standards and codes. Uh, but for the most part, they want to take care of their patients. Uh, they have central systems in most hospitals with very intricate controls, especially related to air quality, humidity control, temperature control, and that type of thing. Uh, they use MERV 14 filters in the main areas, the corridors, the waiting rooms, uh, most of the larger rooms that you're in. And these MERV 14 filters have an excellent efficiency at removing particulate related to all those problems that I talked about a little bit earlier. Now patient rooms, they're a little bit different. They use MERV-8 air filters, but even MERV-8 air filters, uh, when combined with the proper number of air changes, do an excellent job of removing these contaminants from the air. Uh, so basically, if you're going into a hospital environment, you're well protected in terms of airborne contaminants. Doesn't mean we shouldn't be concerned. But for the most part, uh, the environment is protected for visitors and patients and, of course, the people that work there. So you think that the steps that they've taken, they sound pretty pervasive. Do you think it's really enough? Generally, yes. Uh, of course, things are happening on a daily basis. You know, as an example, this drug-resistant tuberculosis, I mean, we just don't know how we're going to handle that, and, it, and it's an extreme concern. When it hits locally, it also hits your local paper, but uh, if you pick up the national papers on any day, you're going to find, you know, two or three pages deep, you'll find all sorts of hospitals that may be going through some of these types of problems. So my, for the 8,200 hospitals out there, I, I'd say generally people do not have to worry. They just have to environment and what may be happening locally, but just by paying attention to the news. Well, it sounds like the hospitals have done their part. What kind of steps can I take to protect my family and myself? Well, as in anything, when you're talking about uh, rhinovirus, flus, that type of thing, proper hygiene is really the key. Uh, a lot of these contaminants can, can only be transferred by touch. Uh, so maybe the, the germs are left on a surface and then you happen to touch that surface. If you really think about it, when you're walking through a hospital, there's always somebody cleaning, there's always somebody mopping the floor. That's all for the protection of the people within that environment. Uh, but when you do go into a medical facility and you visit somebody in a room and you know, perhaps there was a sneeze involved or a cough or something, 
it's always a good idea to stop in that restroom on your way out and cleanse your hands or, or maybe carry some of those uh, antiseptic wipes with you. Uh, you know, a, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure certainly holds true here. That sounds like a good idea. If, if I want to learn more about this, where can I find some additional information, Charlie? Well, Campbell has some excellent information that talks about the transfer of these type of uh, uh, germs and so on. They've also got an excellent booklet that talks about healthcare and medical facilities. Each page is kind of a, a new entry into uh, a different aspect of air quality within a hospital. Uh, you can find these items uh, typically on the web at catalog.campfill.us or another website, campfill.us or even campfill.com. Just go to industries and look under medical or hospital facilities, and then you'll be able to find these additional materials to look through. Uh, if they, if those, that information doesn't satisfy your curiosity, then your best bet is to contact your local Campfill sales office. And that they, they can also be found on the websites. Excellent. Well, thanks for participating. Thanks for the great information. And we look forward to seeing you at our next Hangout when we cover more essential air filtration topics. Thanks, Thanks. Charlie. Be well. Thank you, Steve. You too. Be well.